Hi everybody and welcome to vodcast number 15. Uh, this is Mr. Galladay for Desert Ridge High School in Honors Biology and today we're going to look at the second part of cell organelles and today we're going to be looking at some plant cells and the uh, organelles that are different between the, um, the animal cells and, and a couple of other topics that are related that uh, well they'll just make sense when we when we get to that point. Okay, first thing I wanted to show you is some pictures, just like uh, in the last podcast, I started off with some pictures of some animal cells. Uh, I wanted to start off with some pictures of some plant cells. And these are uh, some photographs taken with a light microscope. And uh, in these, these are some uh, leaves of some aquatic plants. Uh, and take just a look at these, and I think you'll see that uh, this these all have a particular look to them, and this is maybe what we think of as our quote-unquote typical plant cell. Uh, and then if we look at uh, some root cells, uh, from also from plants, obviously, uh, you can see that they don't look quite the same. And maybe take just a minute and see if you can uh, identify what it is that looks particularly different. Let me go back to the, uh, here's the leaf cells. And then if we go uh, up to the plant cells, uh, you see that there's some very uh, distinct differences. And I think you hopefully have noticed that uh, the green things are missing. And if you think about it, that really makes sense. Uh, it doesn't make sense for a plant to have chloroplasts. The green things are, of course, chlor chloroplasts. And it doesn't make sense for a plant to have uh, chloroplasts underground. Uh, and so just as we often talk about a typical plant cell as having chloroplasts, um, you know, one thing I think that's obvious here is that they are different. Uh, here's another picture that shows some um, cells from, from stems, uh, and these are taken with a different, very different type of microscope, and uh, you can see they look uh, entirely different yet. These are from uh, the stems of a couple different types of plants. Um, so again, the, the thing that I want you to be aware of and to keep in mind is that when we talk about a typical cell, um, there really is no typical cell. There are some things that they all have in common, and that's what we're going to be emphasizing on. But um, all of these cells are different depending on the particular job that they do. Okay, so first of all, so now having said that there's no such thing as a typical plant cell, uh, we'll start off by looking at a typical plant cell. Um, so this is a diagram, and uh, there should be, I think by now, uh, some of these organelles should be uh, starting to become quite familiar to you. Uh, so take just a minute, look at this diagram, uh, and see if some of these things look familiar to you and you, if you can identify what they are. Okay, so we'll start off with, uh, just as we did before, uh, and uh, the thing I guess I would suggest for you to do is to make a drawing on the left-hand side of your page and then on the right-hand side of your notebook to uh, put in the, uh, the functions and the, the information that goes along with that. Okay, the first thing we'll talk about is the cell wall, uh, and cell walls... Uh, are very different from cell membranes. Pl animal cells, of course, have a cell membrane. Cell walls are unique to plant cells and uh, a few other types of cells that we'll talk about later. Um, if you think of a wall, right, we usually, when we think of a wall, we think of something that is pretty sturdy, pretty substantial, as opposed to a membrane that typically suggests something uh, which is a little bit more flexible, not quite as uh, sturdy. Um, so as a membrane was uh, thin and flexible, a wall is thick, tough, and strong. It's made of this substance called cellulose, uh, which I hope everybody remembers is a polysaccharide. Uh, it's made from glucose monomers. And everything that you have, uh, you probably can come in contact, you can reach out and touch many things that are made from cellulose. Anything that's made of wood, paper, cardboard, uh, that you come in contact with is made of, uh, of cellulose. Um, so this is the material that all cell walls are, uh, plant cell walls are made of. Uh, it provides some shape, some structure, protection, support uh, for the plant cell. Um, 
since it is a fairly tough material, it has to have holes in it that allows uh, substances such as water, nutrients, and so forth to move in and out of the cell. Okay, so that's the cell wall. Uh, and as we said, that is very different from uh, the, cell, uh, the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. The plasma membrane, the cell membrane, is uh, just as in the animal cell, is thin and flexible. Uh, its function, as in the animal cell, is to control what enters and leaves the cell. Uh, however, it's very different from the cell wall. Um, I guess one image to maybe think about, if you can imagine a water balloon in a, uh, in a cardboard box, um, then you sort of have the, the general idea of a plant cell, right? The cardboard box would be the cell wall, uh, and then the, the balloon, the water balloon, would be the, uh, the cell membrane. And then, of course, the water would be the cytoplasm of the cell. Um, but that would give you a, sort of a, a point of comparison, right? The, the, the outer wall, the box, gives it some shape and some support. And then the membrane is much more thin, much more flexible. Uh, okay, and just keep in mind the cell membrane is always inside of the cell wall. Okay. Uh, plant cells also have vacuoles. They are often very different from the vacuoles of animal cells. Animal cells tend to have many smaller vacuoles, where plant cells tend to have a uh, what we call a central vacuole. Um, that vacuole, just as in animal cells, is Basically, you could think of it as a bubble of that cell membrane material, that phospholipid material that the cell membranes are made of. Uh, in plant cells, almost always that central vacuole is, is storing water. Uh, there will sometimes be smaller vacuoles that may store um, glucose or starch or something like that. But that if there's a large central vacuole, it is almost always uh, storing water. Okay, another important uh, distinctive organelle in plant cells that is not found in animal cells are the chloroplasts. Um, chloroplasts are green. Uh, we often color them green uh, because they contain the pigment chlorophyll. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, photosynthesis in uh, much detail uh, during second semester. Uh, and at that time, we're going to get into the internal workings of the chloroplasts in more detail. Uh, their main function is to perform photosynthesis. Um, you may have learned a simpler definition of what uh, photosynthesis is in grade school or junior high. Uh, the important thing to understand now is uh, it is a conversion where we're taking, we're using sunlight energy to take water and carbon dioxide molecules and transform them into glucose and oxygen. Okay, the chemical formula, the chemical formula for that looks like this: uh, CO2 with H2O in the presence of sunlight is going to give us C6H12O6, which of course is glucose and also some oxygen. Uh, the oxygen is produced as a waste in the process. Okay, so after those organelles, so we've talked about the cell wall, the cell membrane, that big central vacuole, and the chloroplasts, and other than that, all the other organelles are basically the same. Uh, so again, you should be able to look at these and compare those to the notes that you had from uh, the animal cells, and you should be able to see some things there that are quite familiar, and hopefully you can identify those. If you can't, I would strongly suggest you go back and have a look at the earlier vodcasts to uh, be sure that you are familiar with the nucleus, the ribosomes, uh, the Golgi, and uh, so forth. Okay. One of the other things I wanted to, uh, oh, before we do that, I wanted to just have to take a second, have you identify some of these things. So if you look at this, uh, hopefully you realize that's pointing to the outer thing, and that is, of course, the cell wall. This is pointing to these little flattened structures on the outside, which are, of course, the Golgi bodies. This is pointing to the wiggly lines coming between the nucleus and the cell membrane, and the ones with dots on them would be, of course, the rough endoplasmic reticulum. 
The wiggly lines going between the nucleus and the cell membrane without the dots would be the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The little dots, of course, are ribosomes. The green structures would be chloroplasts. These other structures are mitochondrion. Or, well, this is a mitochondrion, or they are or a mitochondrion. They are collectively mitochondria. The watery substance inside the plant cell, just like an animal cell, is the cytoplasm. This is pointing at the genetic material, which is DNA. This arrow is pointing at the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope. This is pointing at the inner line, which of course is the cell membrane. This would be pointing at the large central vacuole. And this of course would be pointing uh, at the substance in the vacuole, which since it's a plant cell would most likely be water. Oops. Okay, so hopefully you could identify all of those as we went through those. Uh, okay. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention real quickly here was the difference between mitochondria and chloroplasts. Uh, in this diagram, since it's uh, color, uh, they're nice and distinctive because I can use uh, the green to indicate the chloroplast. But uh, of course, when you see these on a test on a Xerox copy, uh, we, we can't use color. So um, it's important to notice that there are some differences. Um, the brown structure over here on the left is a mitochondrion. Uh, and if you'll notice the way it's drawn and the way, and there's a reason that we uh, draw it this way, but it has sort of a uh, kind of a convoluted in, inner membrane, which is uh, often drawn as this kind of a thing, kind of a zigzag pattern. Um, both of these structures are kind of oval shaped or football shaped, uh, but the mitochondria will almost always be drawn with this kind of a zigzagged uh, or convoluted inner membrane. Okay, chloroplasts, on the other hand, have uh, have these little stacks of uh, of circular structures. These are called grana, uh, and again, we'll be getting into those in some uh, in, in greater detail next semester. Mitochondria, we'll be talking about uh, in greater detail this this semester. Um, they both have lots of other similarities. Uh, they both have their own DNA and can re reproduce themselves independently uh, of the DNA inside the cell. So they both have some uh, very unique properties as far as organelles are concerned. Uh, and they are both involved with energy conversion. Uh, but these structures, this is the thing to notice that the, the main difference when you're looking at a diagram of these things. Okay. The other thing that I wanted to mention at this time is uh, the genetic material. Um, there, are, there are two main forms of genetic material that we often talk about. Um, something called chromatin and then something called chromosomes. Um, they're, they're both made of DNA, but when the DNA is unraveled, uh, it's in a form that's called chromatin. Uh, that's how the, the form that the DNA is in most of the time. Uh, chromosomes are only present when the cell is uh, going through mitosis. Um, so during mitosis, you're going to see these chromosomes are going to, or the DNA is going to tightly wind itself into a, a, a bundle. Um, one analogy is the difference between a rolled up newspaper uh, and if you unravel a newspaper, of course, it takes up a, a whole lot more space. So the rolled up newspaper would be like uh, a chromosome, and then the unrolled newspaper would be like chromatin. Um, the other analogy, I guess, would be a piece of yarn, uh, where the fibers, when it's all sort of unraveled, would be like the DNA fibers. Uh, and then once it's all sort of uh, twisted together uh, in its compact shape, that would be uh, similar to our chromosome. Okay, uh, so that's where I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, this has been podcast number 15 for Honors Biology at Desert Ridge High School, and I hope you have a great day.